Sixers tonight, right here on 97.3 ESPN. It's coming up, 7.30. Tom McGinnis has the call right here on 97.3 ESPN. We'll have all the action, and they'll have all the pregame action. NBC Sports Philadelphia still doing pre- and post-game. With Andy Fadul, Mark Jackson, and this man, the coach, Jimmy Lynham, as he is set to join me here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline, taking a look at game two, a couple things back at game number one that the Sixers can make adjustments on. And, Coach, we always hear that term, it's a make-or-miss league. Uh, They made 23s the other night. Um, How can the Sixers prevent Atlanta from making 23s again? Because they were getting some wide-open looks in that game. But part of it is you got to get the ball out of Young's hands, which gives you some open looks. So what are some of the things that Doc Rivers and his staff are talking about for game two tonight? Well, you just summed up the dilemma, Mike. Uh, I believe you're right. You have to get the ball out of Trey Young's hands more frequently than the Sixers did the first half. That's that's number one. He was he wasn't an All Star the first half. He was all world. That's how good his first half was. They they had 23s for the game. They had 13 at the half. Trey Young had 25 points at the half when they finally started. The second half, they brought him back to earth. What, three for ten field goals, three, three turnovers. At the half, I mean, he had seven assists. He had one turn, 25 points. But at the price you're going to pay, I mean, it's, I know people that say, oh, look, they're getting these wide-open looks. Anytime you trap a ball, people on one. The other team knows what they're doing. They're going to get an open look. It's that simple. It's called playing the game. It's a trap. It's like when Joel B. It's ironic in this sense. You know how the Sixers play. They throw the ball to Joel Embiid a lot. He's good enough. If you single cover him, he's on his way to 50. If you double cover him, he throws it out, and that's when the Sixers play the three-ball game. Well, you ready? Atlanta does the exact same thing, except the guy they do it with is six one. And maybe he was 170 pounds. It's unbelievable. Uh, and you're right. I mean, look, he doesn't get a lot of moments in this uh, type of atmosphere where they don't get a lot of time on national TV. But we're finding out how special he is. I said before this series, to me, what doesn't get talked about a lot, Coach, is he averages almost 10 assists a game. That tells you not only does he score, he sees the whole floor. And that's where I think this team, Philadelphia, is having some problems because he sees the open man. Well, there's no question. You're you're hitting it right on the head. I actually started counting, and I started laughing because I stopped. Mike, he has the ball in his hands virtually every – that's number one. And on – I'm going to say, so I – my bet, on 85% of those possessions, they set at least one pick for him. So all this nonsense about he did this to Danny Green. Yeah, it's not about who balls him. And I'll give you, Simmons is a better defender than Danny Green. Matisse Spiegel is. That's not the issue. If Mike Hill set the pick on Ben Simmons, who's guarding Trey Young, you ready? Trey Young is loose. It's not about Ben Simmons at that point. It's about help Ben Simmons. That's the whole design pick and roll defense. What are you willing to do to get this ball out of this kid's hand? In the first half, the Sixers did it zero times. In the second half, they did it pretty good. And that's going to be the big adjustment. So, Coach, does Doc go back to Danny Green tonight uh, to start things off and just see how far he goes? And maybe the leash is shorter. Does he go right to Ben? We know Ben. They don't want to get him in foul trouble. Young's a master at drawing fouls. Or does he do something drastic and start Matisse Stiebel over Green? Yeah, uh, uh, any one of those three, I'm fine with whatever he wants to do. Uh, and, you know, I know the world go crazy if you see uh, Danny Green guard them on. I like your first one, I think. I'd play Danny Green off and give him a short leash. Uh, but you're dead on. Uh, this kid is, I, I think this is right. And if I'm wrong, I'm only off a couple spots. Joel Embiid shoots the most free throws in this league. You ready? Trey Young is number two. Unbelievable. If he's not two, he's four. He has an ability. And has had to get in. I, I got left. All the people said, did you see that call? I said, well, how many calls do you want to moan about? You want to moan about two calls? The kid had the ball 80 times, and you're going to talk about two calls? Please. <laughs> um, what – I mean, is is 
you see Ben a lot, and I know you said with me last time we talked, Coach, is that Ben to use the defensive player of the year. I think Scotty Brooks said he's the defensive player of the year. So if you have the best defensive player to, uh, on in the league, do you put him on their best offensive player? I mean, is that, you know, is well, that? Here's what I would say to you. You brought up the point to me, and you're, you're absolutely correct. I, I don't want Ben getting in foul trouble. I, I would like that. Here's how I'll say it. I would like for Ben. I don't want this team loose like we let them loose the other night down 26. I'd like to have that club in my bag late game. Three minutes to go if this is a close game. I want Ben Simmons available for this kid Trey Young then. I don't want necessarily come out, you know, mid first quarter, you know, all the second quarter. No, I don't need that. And the other thing, let me just give you a flip side of a coin. You got to make Trey Young work. He's not a top level defender. Make this defense. I don't yeah. care who he's guarding. If he's guarding Matisse Seibel, run Seibel off some screens. Because even if Trey Young is not a guard, like can really commit to guard Matisse. And even if Matisse doesn't want to shoot it, at least Trey Young has to run around and coming off the screen, you got a chance to bang him. I put defensive end gave him a free pass. Uh, with, how would you describe... I don't want to. I say this, and I don't. Not that I'm. But would you say that Joel Embiid against this Hawks offense is a liability on defense? No, absolutely not. No, Mike. It's a tough scheme. Tell him what you want him to do. Gotcha. They think that he decided he was going to play soft like that the first quarter. With scheme, they don't want Trey Young. You know, getting to the rim and getting. No, bad, unfortunately, bad decision, fellas. I'm, I'm not saying you can't play and beat like that on occasion. Yeah. Mike, I'm going to use – I don't know football, but I'm a big football fan. I know this. The defense coordinators want the he's going into a game, okay? to confuse the quarterback. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Well, that's what this league is about now. Yeah. You can't use your grandpa's defense to guard this stuff. You must confuse me up a little bit. Are you going to blow him up with a hard trap <laughs> and yeah. beat out of the – you want trap the ball? You let him – that's like a panther coming out of a cage. Yeah, Please. and I bring this up only because, you know, you hear some people say, well, he's been a liability on defense, and I say, well, he's a liability, but I don't hear people asking to get him off the floor because even if he was a no, liability, not- you want him on the floor. No, I understand what people see. They think I'm soft. Trey Young comes off and either shoots a three or makes the little floater. If you don't want him to get that, then tell the big guy you're up on that little guy. And whether you're trapped him or not, that's an open story. I mean, there's a lot of subtlety, you know, that the guy in the stands, it's like me watching football. I don't understand line play or what have you. No, it's nothing to do with Embiid's ability or Danny Green getting bumped off. Danny Green guarded Trey Young flat out one-on-one one, maybe three times the whole game. Yeah. Um, pick and roll. It's the, it's the offense of choice now in this league. Oh, absolutely. And uh, when I, when I when you see nine, nine turnovers in that first quarter, what was that a product of? Anything Atlanta's doing or just sloppy? Uh, come out sloppy. No, I have to say the last. To be honest with you, and, and you're also citing a big point. What happens with a game like this when the other team, Atlanta in this case, is having their way offensively? And you're like kind of groping, trying to figure it out. I'm talking about sitting there on the bench. Like, what we do here, man? This team is on fire. Well, now you compound it with nine turnovers the first half. Are you kidding? I mean, come on, do the math. Yeah. Four times yeah. five, if you kept that rate up, you'd turn it over 36 times. The average team turns it over 12 for a game. Come on. Well, and that, and again, I, I open this up, Coach, by saying, hey, they hit 23s. They needed every t- bit of 23s to th- close that game out. I don't know that you make 23s again as poorly as the Sixers. Now, the Sixers played poorly in that game. They lose by four. But is that more of a product that, hey, you're up by 26, you took the foot off the gas, or did the Sixers make some adjustments and make some changes that they can build off of? Both of your points are true. The Sixers made some good, good adjustments. They got much more aggressive. They turned them. Uh, I thought the defensive heat was real good the second half. But, yes, Atlanta did take their foot off the pedal. My, it was, I'm laughing because I couldn't believe it happened. It was an eight-point game with 14 seconds. <laughs> Nate McMillan, for Lord knows what reason. I think he was being a little cute and sending a subtle message to Ben. Okay? He took a hack. 
He had an eight-point lead with 14 seconds. It was over. Right. But you know what set the stage? Ben made the first, missed the second, rebound and beat, up and beat, foul, and beat foul shot. All that now sends you into a full court press off the foul shot. Steal that off a trap and then look <laughs> that up. It's a two point game, please. So don't tell me how they rallied the two. Are you kidding me? Right, absolutely. No, you're right about that. Um all right, so I, I joke with you often when you're on is when I remember you coaching the Sixers, it was the five starters and Ron Anderson. I don't know that I can name another guy that played. Ron Anderson was the only guy I can remember that came off the bench. Well, Normal. All right, I'm going, to, I'm going to jog your memory, and you will remember Scotty Brooks. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't feel like he – like, Ron Anderson got major, like, normal minutes. No, no, no. no he was a legit – I give you – I got you. He was a legit six minutes. No, but Scotty Brooks was a part of that team. He was. He gave yeah. me, a, like, a, a very, uh, like, high – Yes. Like, he's uh, – Max kind of, you know, like, energy. Yep, yep. You know, he's coming into the game all over the place. But that – you – like, it feels like you – and a lot of teams, not just you, but you guys kept it tight. You, they're playing a five-man bench lineup. He's going 11. I see the Nets last night playing eight guys. I mean, does he have to reconsider that? Well, yeah, maybe. I, I predicted he would would play 10 or 11 in the first couple games. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, last series. Uh, normally, coaches will start to tighten it up a little bit. And quite honestly, it's based on performance. I got news for you. If uh, if Jake Milton was playing the way he played the last year's playoffs, getting floor time, he's not doing it. he's not giving it to you. Right. So all of a sudden he vanishes from the rotation. That's in I why you you look your players right in the eye and tell them, look, I have no magic number. I know the the world thinks you only play eight. It depends how many guys are going to go out and contribute. Max right now, I mean he's he's going to be in there. He deserves to be in there. He does. Uh, yeah. I mean, these Seibel's in there. Dwight Howard's in there. Gets, I thought he Corkmaz did a decent job the other night. If he can make a couple of his shots, he'll get some floor time. Yeah, uh, George Hill too. I mean, he's a guy. That I guess they got to, you know, for for a little stretch. It's crazy though to say Shake Milton was the fourth highest scorer on this team, and he's out of the rotation essentially. You're uh, you're right, but that, yeah, that's how poorly he's playing. Unbelievable. I mean, yeah, you know, like you have to. What have you done for me tomorrow? I tell these guys right from the get. That's that's the world we live in, fellas. I know it's grammatically incorrect. I'll repeat. What have you done for me tomorrow? Um, I want to finish with this because I thought Tobias Harris is such a factor for this team. And I in game uh, five, four against Washington, I thought he reverted back to last year a little. He looked indecisive. Game five against Washington, back to decisive. Last game, I thought you got a mix of him. What did you see from Tobias? Yeah, uh, I think that's fair. Um yeah, he he was he was okay. You know, he was decent. Uh, but uh, yeah, you'd like to say uh, when when you need it, you gotta yep. you have to have a little bit more. Right. Uh, you know, you you need might what this you know everybody's saying. Are we in trouble? Are we this? My response is real simple. I think this team is really good. They've been really good all year long. I know who they are, and I think they are better in this series. I think they'll win this series. But you can't be like on pins and needles every time to win a championship. There's Everybody knows this, but I'm going to repeat it. It means you beat whoever they put in front of you. Yeah. And it means every one of those guys you beat. That's what winning a championship means. And you're ready. If you're not good enough, being somebody who's in front of you, in whatever seven-game series is, you ready? It means you're not good enough to win a championship. <laughs> and conversation. That's it. Coach, you uh, know this. In Philly – the Sixers could win three games and lose one, and they are the team that lost one game more so than they are that won three games, right? Correct. <laughs> That's the way it goes in this town, unfortunately. But, uh, hey, we'll see you tonight. Uh, the adjustments, they need to be uh, much more off the jump uh, into that game. It seemed that they were not into that game. And, and Matisse even said it. Hey, uh, maybe we let the, our, burst our bubble in that first game a little bit. But, Coach, I could talk about this series and hoops with you all day for the rest of this show, but I know you got to get going and get ready for NBC Sports uh, and uh, the crew tonight for pre and post game. So I appreciate it, and hopefully we can do this again soon. Anytime, Mike, you know. Uh, I appreciate it. Coach Jimmy Line, I'm here on the Sports Bash, and he, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline.